Hi everybody, I'm Rebecca Keppel and I'm here today with a new card video. This one is using the technique of stamping to create stitched lines. It's really, really easy and creates a really homespun look, so I hope you'll give it a try. To get started, I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of Nina Solar White cardstock, and I have the My Favorite Things cloud stencil with some Tim Holtz distress ink in tumbled glass and you can see that I'm going to turn the stencil around to use several of the edges to create these cloud lines and I'm rubbing from the stencil towards the open part of the cardstock that creates the darkest line on the cloud border and then a lighter blue as it moves away. And that will then give you the white area that is the puffy cloud, and the rest of it will be your sky. So again, I just like to turn the stencil around to give it a more organic look so all of the clouds don't look exactly the same. That's the benefit of having a stencil like this, which I think is absolutely brilliant that you get four different designs on one stencil. I was trying to decide if I wanted just a little bit more at the bottom here, and I do. I just wanted to have plenty of that tumbled glass distress ink on the cardstock as well. Next, I am going to grab my Misty and my Simon Says Stamp Misty Transparency, as well as a stamp set from Simon Says Stamp that has this rainbow and some curved sentiments that go around it. So I'm gonna place the transparency, which has a grid, on top of my cardstock that's been inked with my clouds, and then I will be able to straighten up my rainbow right in the center and lay my sentiments right over that. So once I have the sentiments where I want them, I close the door of the Misty and pick the stamps up, remove the transparency, and I'm ready to stamp my greeting. So I'm gonna use VersaFine Black Onyx ink. It is a pigment ink. I'm not gonna heat emboss it this time, but I do think that when you're stamping over other inks, this ink does really, really well and makes a nice crisp impression. Now I have a piercing mat from We Are Memory Keepers and one of their piercing tools as well. And I'm just going to make holes to sew in all along the rainbow arcs. So there are six arcs and I'm gonna make evenly spaced holes around. And you could just go ahead and stitch. I find it easier to have holes evenly spaced already. To me, it just makes the stitching process go a lot faster. So I am going to use a Roji Biv of colors here. And most of these are crochet thread, which I like because it's a little thinner than embroidery thread and doesn't have so many layers. So it doesn't come apart. And I'm just doing a basic back stitch here, up through one hole and then tape off the back and then up through the next hole and go back towards the direction you started. Once I have all my stitching done, I am going to cut a piece of black fun foam that's a little bit smaller than my panel, and I'm gonna slowly apply a tape runner to the fun foam. The reason I'm applying it to the fun foam is because it is a little bit smaller than the cardstock panel that I've created, and the reason I'm going slowly is because if you go too fast, sometimes the adhesive skips and jumps, and so you won't get full coverage. I'm going to lay my cardstock panel down on top of that fun foam and press down. And now I have a piece of cardstock that's four and a quarter by five and a half. I did trim that cloud panel down to about four by five and a half. So it will have a nice little border or mat on the left and the right hand side once I get it adhered down nice and straight. And that will give it some dimension. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my Memory Runner XL, which is just my tape runner, and adhere this entire panel down to a card base that's four and a quarter by five and a half, and that completes this card, except for some embellishing. I decided last minute that it did need a little bit of sparkle and shine to go along with the rest of the homemade look to it with the stitching. I've decided to apply a few pretty pink posh uh, flat confettis and these are like sequins without the hole in the middle. I love them. I am applying them with the Ranger glossy accents because that dries 
clear but not matte and I don't want a matte look to the back of these sequins that you can see through. I want it to be nice and clear and sparkly. So I'm using my jewel picker to pick up the sequins and lay them down. I also have my bead tray out which gives me access to a bunch of the little sequins and is easy to pour them back into the container as well. So you know I always try to use sequins in three different spots to create that visual triangle around the card and sometimes I just don't know when to say enough is enough so I just kept adding them I found like I, a couple of different places that I wanted to put them and then I just kept putting a few more in just because I really like the look of them I think on the clouds they look really pretty and so you know, you could definitely skip this step and you would have a super nice stamped and stitched card. So that completes this technique, which is just stamping to create stitch lines and then hand stitching on it. If you're interested in the products that I use, they'll all be linked down below. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, you can do that here. If you want to check out my blog, there's a link to that as well. And I'll have a couple of videos that you might be interested in. I want to thank you so much for stopping by today. Have a wonderful day.